So this photograph is a plane of a good friend of mine, and it was photographed up in Minot, North Dakota. And uh, it's a very unique Waco. Had a really cool history. Um, to give a little bit of backstory, which is really kind of a big part of my photography is, is telling the story and uh, knowing the story behind everything's going on. So I incorporate that into the, the, the photograph. Uh, this particular airplane was flying down Southern California back in the 1930s. And um, a very famous photograph was taken of this very plane, taken off from an airport, which is no longer. Um, there's a big giant mural now in that place. Well, there was a little, there was a, a young kid flying this plane. And the photographer who took that plane, the photograph, uh, both these gentlemen, Clancy took the famous photograph, and Clancy uh, in World War II was a, a very famous Navy photographer. A lot of the photographs we see from World War II in the Pacific were taken by Clancy. And then the kid who was flying that, uh, Don Wolf, became a good friend of mine as well. So um, this particular plane I've actually photographed with Don, who is no longer with us, I'm sad, sad to say. Uh, so I, I know the guy who took the famous photograph, and I knew the kid who was flying it who was a World War II vet. So this plane has lots of uh, great stories and memories, and that's kind of what's incorporated in what you see in the photograph. Well, when it comes to um, my photography, um, there isn't, as you might think of as uh, challenges that I have to go through. Um, in this case, uh, the only big challenge is not to have bald skies. Uh, I hate bald skies because they have no kind of emote, uh, emotion to them or expression. Now, otherwise, uh, since I've always worked with the, uh, the best biologists and pilots and, and plane owners, uh, once I show up, I've already made, basically done everything I need to do to make the photograph happen. I've been doing this for 40 years, and in that process, uh, a lot of things – that um, I take for granted, but most photographers starting out don't, um, are pretty simple uh, as far as lens, where I put myself, the background, exposure, all that stuff, that kind of just, you know, falls into place. It's then the little things, like I mentioned the tailwheel being cocked and the direction the plane's facing and the background. You know, that's only variables that, you know, some of them I don't have control of, like clouds, that um, I take advantage of. Now, I, a good friend calls me dancers with clouds because I tend to incorporate skies in many of my photographs because it allows the imagination to go where it wants to. And as soon as you tap that imagination, you really kind of, as a photographer, win. Uh, this photograph was taken with uh, the Nikon D750 and the 24-70 VR lens. Uh, the reason why I use the, either D750 or D850 for my static is because it has a fold-out back monitor. Uh, I have a, a knee with a little arthritis in it, and point blank, I just don't like getting down on my knees to uh, take these low shots. So that fold-out monitor uh, allows me to get down low and not have to look through the viewfinder, and it makes it very simple to take the picture. And then the cameras deliver the, the quality I need for – as you can see, really large prints. This is one of the uh, actually smaller of the prints I have. No, um, and and be honest with you, any information I give you like that would be kind of irrelevant uh, because the moment I took that photograph, the moment I felt the light was you know the best for the scene that's that's in front of my lens, but possibility that anybody could duplicate any of those scenarios, be it uh, the aircraft, the green grass, and the, and the clouds, and the diffused light, that my exposure settings, they, would, they, just, they just wouldn't correlate. So it's not, uh, you know, it's, most people need to sit there and when they go out and take their photographs, follow their heart and tell their story in their particular way, which could be lots of depth of field or no depth of field. It could be a low angle or a high angle. You know, photography is one of these great things that we all can go out and enjoy and, and together yet come back with very different results because we have a different, all have a different way of telling the story.
Well, the, the thing I really love about the true life, there's a couple things. First and foremost is um, aircraft, uh, even like this one, which is, you know, a lot of it is wood and cloth, all right, and most aircraft are metal. They all have a real shine to them. Um, and with the right light, when you're standing there, there's a, there's a depth to that metal. Even though it's, you know, it's metal, there's a depth to it because it reflects light in so many different ways, so many different directions. And what the true life does, you know, is it's that beautiful acrylic that it's that print is sandwiched in uh, brings out that depth, even though it's a flat piece of paper, right? I mean, that's the one thing about photography. People, you know, have a hard time understanding and incorporating their photograph is the fact that, you know, our vision is a really amazing tool. And we see everything very 3D, but our prints are very flat. They're, you know, two-dimensional. I think personally one-dimensional because it's, it's on a wall, right? It's not, you don't see all the curves, all that depth of the grass blades and the clouds unless you put it there in your photograph. And with the True Life Acrylic, it brings that out and brings a, a life to the photograph, a 3D that's, you know, very important. So that's, that's the one aspect I really like about it. And then number two, um, when I present plane owners and pilots with this print, because um, you got to realize these people have, you know, very expensive aircraft. Uh, they, some of them call them toys, uh, but they're parked not at their house, right? They're parked in a hangar at an airport. And so if they want to really enjoy their aircraft, they have to go to the airport or look at my photograph. So in that case, the print's very important to bring that life out. And then, well, I love pilots, and they're really kind of meticulous when it comes to aircraft, but they have grease everywhere, you know? And, and, and that acrylic, you know, in many environments, because a lot of these hang in hangers, that acrylic protects the print, uh, not only from the obvious kind of grease and other kind of things, but, you know, that hangar door opens, it's really incredibly bright light. Um, so they can see that photograph even when the hangar door open because the, the, the great acrylic that is, that is used in the true life printing process, that uh, or mounting process. So a whole combination just makes it, for me, a win-win for uh, showing off my stories as well as presenting my client with something that they think is just like, wow. And that's, that's whenever you want to, you give a print, you know, you don't need people to say, wow, you just want their eyes to get really big. You want that smile to come across and then you know that you have presented uh, your, you know, your best.